By now, we are no strangers to hearing about inflation in the UK, and although there has been some movement in the right direction, inflation has remained stubborn. With the headline CPI rate standing at 7.9% in June, and core CPI standing at 6.9%, and proving difficult to bring down, the Bank of England has continued to raise interest rates in an attempt to pull inflation down to their 2% target. Most recently, on the 3rd of August, we have seen the Monetary Policy Committee raise rates to 5.25%, bringing them to a 15-year high. For those of us in our 20s and early 30s, we will never have experienced rates this high in our adult life. These rate rises are bringing increased pain to those looking to buy, or those whose fixed rate mortgages are coming to an end. With the average 2-year fixed rate now at 6.85%, and the average 5-year fixed rate standing at 6.36%. On the other hand, news articles have always been referring to how these rate rises could be good news for savers. But with the average savings account offering a measly 2.53%, it is clear that not all savers are gaining the full benefit that a high base rate could offer. The big high street banks are the biggest culprits of this, as they know they do not have to be as competitive due to strong brand loyalty and established customer bases. Take NatWest for example. They are currently offering only 1.41% on their easy access saving account for balances under £25,000, and these rates aren't even much better if you are lucky enough to have bigger sums of money in your savings. Barclays are even worse offering 1.51% on balances below £10,000 and 1% on any savings above this value. So they are actually punishing you for saving more of them. We could go through many more examples, but it's a similar story with all high street banks offering easy access saving rates nowhere near the headline Bank of England rate of 5.25%. But I'm going to show you how retail investors, like myself, can with very low risk benefit from the full Bank of England base rate on their savings. This is not financial advice nor a recommendation of what to do with your cash. It is simply for educational and entertainment purposes. Please do your own research and consider taking independent financial advice before making any decisions. The solution to this is money market funds. The last few months have seen increased attention brought to these funds, and some great videos have been produced on the topic, and that is for a very good reason. At times of high interest rates, they are very attractive places to part your cash. If you have not heard of them before, then I don't blame you. No one has been talking about them for a very long time. For the previous decade, interest rates have been so low that in my opinion, no one really should have been interested in these types of funds anyway, as a combination of low interest rates and fees has even seen some of these funds have years where they've lost money. However, with rates now at 5.25% and predictions that they could rise even further, money market funds are now more attractive than they've been for a long time. So, what is a money market fund? Money market funds tend to provide a return much closer to the base rate of the central bank of the currency they hold. For money market funds denominated in pounds sterling, this will be the rate set by the Bank of England, and for those in US dollars, it will be the rate set by the US Federal Reserve. The funds deliver these returns by investing in short-term debt. This could be debt from governments, banks, or companies, but all with high credit ratings. The short-term nature of the holdings means that money market funds quickly adjust to any changes in the central bank rate. As the short-term debt holdings in the fund mature, they are quickly replaced by debt issued at the new rate, which means your money invested in the fund will quickly benefit from any increases in the bank rate. The combination of the debt being short-term and of high credit quality means that these funds are very low risk. There is very little chance that a highly credit-worthy source will default on their short-term debt. By looking at the key information document of a few different money market funds, we can see that they are all given a risk rating of 1, which is the lowest rating an investment fund can be given. As a UK investor, I personally would only put my money in a sterling money market fund. Although money market funds in different currencies are available to UK investors, we have to take into account any currency conversion fees as well as the additional currency risk that comes with them. If you have money in a US dollar money market fund for example, but the pound strengthens against the dollar, then you may get a lower return than the central bank rate. Looking at the performance of the Lix or Fed fund, US dollar cash ETF provides a perfect example of currency risk. As UK investors, we can purchase this fund on the London Stock Exchange, and our pounds will be converted into dollars in the fund. However, when we come to sell our holding, the dollars will have to be converted back into pounds. Therefore, in the year to date, as the pound has strengthened greatly against the dollar, all returns of the fund have been wiped out. You can see the almost mirror effect in the relationship. By investing in a sterling fund, the currency risk is taken out of the equation. A good way of seeing what to expect from a sterling money market fund is to look at the Sonia rate, as all funds I've seen have this as their performance benchmark. Sonia stands for Sterling Overnight Index Average. It is based on the actual transactions and reflects the average of the interest rates that banks pay to borrow sterling overnight from each other. It is published daily by the Bank of England and you can access all the historical data on the Bank of England website. You can see on the chart how the Sonia rate has increased in line with all the base rate rises recently. 
At the time of recording, I cannot see the Sonya rate that reflects the latest rate rise to 5.25, but you can see that when the base rate was 5%, the Sonya rate was around 4.93%. When the data is available, I would expect that the Sonya rate is now between 5.15 to 5.2, and this will be quickly picked up by any sterling money market funds as they acquire short-term debt at the new rate. Now, to illustrate money market funds further, let's look at a few examples. Money market funds can come in both accumulation and income units. For income funds, the accrued interest will be paid out to you in cash and you will have to manually reinvest this cash into the fund if you want to. Whereas for accumulation funds, the income is automatically reinvested into the fund for you and this will be reflected by an increase in the value of your holding. I personally prefer accumulation versions of money market funds as I do not want to always have to log back into my platform to reinvest the income and reinvesting all income automatically ensures you gain the maximum return from your money market fund by making the most of compound interest. This Royal London short term money market fund is available in both accumulation and income units. The fund's performance target is to outperform after the deduction of charges the Bank of England Sonia rate. The risk rating is 1 and it has a pretty low ongoing charge of only 0.1%. Looking at the breakdown in the most up-to-date fund fact sheet available from the 30th of June, the fund is made up of 12% covered bonds, 16.3% gilts and 71.6% money market instruments. The top 10 holdings show that the fund buys short-term debt from the UK government and big highly creditworthy banks, which gives you an idea of how low risk a fund like this is. On the performance chart, we can see that the curve has been getting steeper and steeper as interest rates have been increasing in the last year. It also shows you how the returns of this fund have been in previous years when interest rates were low. And the cumulative performance here shows that the fund has roughly matched the Sonia rate over the last five years, which may help provide confidence in the ability of the fund to track the Sonia rate in the future. An example of an income fund is the Vanguard Sterling Short Term Money Market Fund. The fund also has a risk rating of 1, and the ongoing charge is 0.12%. The weighted average maturity of the holdings within the fund is 23.3 days, which helps give you an idea of how quickly the new base rate by the Bank of England will be picked up. Once matured, these holdings will be replaced by short-term debt issued at the new rate. The fund is made up entirely of high credit rating instruments, as well as a small amount of cash. Similar to the Royal London Fund, the top 10 holdings are all in short-term debt issued by the UK government and big, highly creditworthy banks. As this is an income fund, the performance chart is interesting to look at. You can see how the interest accrues throughout the month increasing the value, but then the price drops as the accrued interest is paid out to investors. For a final example, I will look at the Lixor Smart Cash Money Market Fund. Invest Engine has just announced that Lixor Smart Cash was the most bought fund in July on their platform, and this really serves to highlight the growing popularity of these money market funds. Lixor Smart Cash is an accumulation fund, the risk rating is 1, and it is the cheapest example I've looked at with a total expense ratio of 0.07%. The investment objective of the fund is to generate a return linked to money market rates, and it is benchmarked against the Sonya rate. Unlike the other two funds I've looked at, Lixor Smart Cash doesn't actually hold the short-term debt and money market instruments directly, but it generates a return close to the Sonya benchmark through a swap agreement with SockGen. Without going into too much detail, this could be considered to increase the counterparty risk. However, I personally don't think that SockGen is at risk of going bust anytime soon, but you should be aware of this before investing. Looking at the fund performance, you can see that the fund has consistently beaten its benchmark, giving returns just above the Sonya rate. What I most like about the Lixor Smart Cash fact sheet here is that you can see the historical monthly returns. You can see how in the last decade or so, the returns has been terrible, and this is in line with how low interest rates have been. However, you can see as interest rates have increased in the second half of 2022, the monthly returns have been getting better and better since, with the most recent figure here showing that the return in June was 0.4%. You would expect these monthly returns for July and August to be even higher, as they will reflect the fact that the base rate has increased further since then. Before you decide to utilise a money market fund, here's a few pros and cons to consider. The biggest pro is that you are able to beat the return of all easy access saving accounts that are currently available on the market, whilst only taking a small amount of risk. As shown in the introduction, the rates offered by the big banks for easy access saving accounts at the moment are far below what these money market funds are currently returning. Next, if you have a very low risk tolerance but want to invest, money market funds are about as low risk as investments can get, and they are very predictable unlike stocks. You can never know for sure which way a stock is going, but with money market funds, you can look at the base rate of the central bank to get a pretty good idea of the return you will get at any given time. Another great advantage is that you don't have to constantly shop around for the best savings account and move your money around. With money market funds, the fund will quickly adjust to any increases in the Bank of England base rate as it buys short-term debt at the new rate. You can therefore keep your cash in one fund and be confident that the new interest rate will be picked up quickly. The biggest strength of money market funds is also their biggest weakness. They quickly adjust to any changes to the base rate. So if the Bank of England decreases interest rates, then so will the return on your money market fund. To get a roughly 5.25% annual return on your money market fund investment, the central bank rate would have to stay at this rate for the full year. 
So you could get more or you could get less depending on what happens. That's why when we look at the historical monthly returns of the Lixor Smart Cash ETF, the returns have been getting greater month on month. But if the Bank of England starts decreasing rates, then the opposite will be true. The returns will get lower and lower each month. In my opinion, money market funds should not be considered a substitute for long-term investing. The data strongly supports that for long-term horizons, you would be much better off putting your money into equities, such as the S&P 500. The average annual return for the S&P 500 is close to 10% over the long term. This would have given you a return way above inflation, whereas you are very unlikely to get an inflation-beating return with a money market fund. This is because the high interest rates that money market funds benefit from are almost always accompanied by a period of high inflation which eats away at your real returns. I personally use money market funds as a place to park cash for short term goals and for my emergency fund. For my long term financial goals, I will always prioritise equities. Next, it is important to remember that low risk does not equal zero risk. Although they are very low risk investments, there are no guarantees unlike FSCS protected bank accounts. Next, they are relatively easy access, but not instant access. It may take a few days from the point of selling your holding in a money market fund to the point of actually seeing the cash back into your bank account. For me, this is not a problem as I will always provide enough time to allow my withdrawal to process. Finally, the tax situation on some of these funds can be more complicated, so it is best to hold them in a stocks and shares ISA to avoid the headache of any tax planning. Of course, this is only a con if you'd rather use your £20,000 annual ISA limit for something else. Whether you decide to use a money market fund or not, I hope this video has given you some food for thought. I personally utilise a money market fund in my stocks and shares ISA on Invest Engine to keep my emergency fund, as well as money I need to pay off a couple 0% credit cards when the interest free period ends. I'm quite happy with the return that Lixor Smart Cash has offered. In the last month, it has given a return of 0.45%, and if we times that by 12, it gives an annual equivalent rate of 5.4%. So at the moment, it is actually performing above the Sonya rate. I also have a money market fund in my lifetime ISA, as I am looking to buy a house in the next year and this allows me to get a decent return whilst taking very little risk. The last thing you want is there to be a market crash just before you're about to buy a house, so it's best to avoid the volatility of the stock market. That's just what I use them for, but in my opinion they're pretty good for any short term goal. If you're not convinced by them, there are a few other options. You could go for premium bonds, a fixed term savings account if you're able to lock away your money for a year or so, or challenger banks such as Chip do offer pretty competitive easy access savings accounts. Anyway, let me know what you think. Will you be putting any money into a money market fund?